Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming back once again. Uh, this is the April 7th meeting of mixed use. Uh, we've been busy uh, despite the lack of response or I see uh, seen updates from us in the last uh, almost six, seven months ago. Met with this committee back in, I believe it was July of last year. Went through the document. I believe we came to consensus on a lot of things that, at that point in time and had uh, come together on kind of the direction of the document. Staff had a lot to do on our end and we've gone through those and Zach will kind of run down through what the updates to the, the manual are. Uh, we sat down after the last one, knew we had to do some updates to the application forms, the process, uh, as we talked about you know, having the planning board be the, the main conduit for the process talk about uh, I think I talked application forms, checklists. Um, we also sat down and looked at the document and saw that there was a lot of redundancies in the document that it kind of went around and around and around. So we thank to Phyllis and, and Zach. Uh, the two of them did a, a Herculean effort to kind of rewrite the document, streamline it, make it what we believe is hopefully a more readable document than it was before. So tonight is basically a get back together um, make sure this committee is still supportive of the document that we've had before. Uh, we've changed out some of the pictures, we've changed some of the formatting, but I, I believe we've kept the, the material in there that was there before. Um, so tonight is kind of a run through and, and looking at the agendas, going through what the changes are. Again, I'll have Zach kind of highlight those, dis discuss, make sure the board is, is still supportive of the document, you know, as it appears today, and then you know, look into the, the boundary district map. Uh, we do have hard copies on the back wall. Uh, we also pop ones up on the screen. Um, we've taken what was the bubble and put what, you know, we thought kind of fit in that bubble, but we need to buy in from this group that those are the parcels you think should be rezoned, if any. Um, and then we can kind of get into talking about, you know, the next steps from here. Uh, Jim Costello put together a, a nice timeline. We've kind of established as, okay, if this group Tonight says, yes, we're good with it. Move ahead, sending it to the town board. You know, how does it fall out from there? You know, we got to go to public hearing and, you know, we can break that down. So with that, unless anybody has any initial questions, comments right off the bat, I'll kind of turn it over to Zach, have him run down, you know, what's changed, do some highlights on that. We can talk, you know, more in depth about, you know, what comments, concerns the group still has and then proceed through the agenda from there. Good afternoon. I can say good afternoon still. It's not evening yet. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for coming again. Like Mark said, it's been a while, so we're happy to see everyone was able to make it. Um, we've all had a chance to look over the document that was sent out by now. And like Mark said, the, the biggest thing that we heard from committee members and that we saw as we kept reviewing the document was redundancy. It was a big issue with that. And the, commit, the word that the committee's always used um, is, you know, make this a fluid and um, streamlined document. A streamlined document is what we really wanted to get out of this, uh, make it flexible for developers, and again, a streamlined document that's easy to read, easy to use. And when we really started to get into the fine tooth of things, looking into all the details that were already in the draft that we looked at back last July, we said there are some things that need to change, and that's when we started going through this process um, to revise the layout, update the content, and reduce a lot of the redundancy. So you see, the structure of the whole document has kind of changed, and I guess this, this can be more of an open discussion if you guys have questions as I talk about things. Um, but first thing is the new structure. Uh, we reduced some of the, the number of chapters that were in it. Um, we reorganized the way things were laid out in terms of where we're going to have our design uh, design criteria for the town, how we introduce the document as just an overall concept of mixed use before we get into what is specifically related to Penfield. So it's kind of an education portion. And then we get into what's really targeted for Penfield. And then we get into the specific districts. Um, so I mean, does anyone have any questions about what they reviewed in the document so far? Any things of concern that you saw? I had a couple of points. Yeah, did everybody get a chance to look at it? Look at it prior to the meeting? 
Okay. So go ahead, Dave. Page 27 and 28, you talk about just like fire, you know, you, you know, fire protection as far as like something to review. And don't you want to just say emergency services? Because you want to include anything else besides just, you know, you have other things, you know, the town to the bottom of the page. As far as different entities that, you know, are going to review it. You're at the bottom of 27? Yeah. What's the section that we're in case anything specific? Four point three B and section A and then down to B. Okay. Fire indicated that adequate state there's adequate like fire protection along with waste disposal, so you want to make sure there's adequate emergency services. Oh I see. You want to include everything. And it also refers to that on the fountain on twenty eight also. Because you don't want to leave out ambulance or anybody else that, or anything else that we don't have currently today. Okay. Um, on page 82, you say the building's up to six stories, and on page 84, you say up to seven stories. So which is it? I thought this group solidified around six. If well, then it says seven on 84, so that well, that's needs a, to be changed. Yep. Um, Again, I saw nodding heads with six stories. For, that was my understand the consensus of the group just making sure we're on page 34 it, it talks about vmt and i don't know if they mean mvt like motor vehicle transportation but it says vmt vmt i don't know what it stands for vehicle miles traveled. vehicle miles okay just as long as i have some well, that's a good point we should have not we've tried to pull the acronyms out as best we could but that's one we should make sure we have that as an acronym so I didn't at the front. Know what that referred to Thirty-four. And on thirty-nine, we talk about landscaping. And should you put anything as far as like, do you want to put, you know, emphasize plantings that enhance certain desirable things, or, or, you know, you don't want to put things that are desirable to certain animals like deer. I mean, you know, this is their way of putting some wording in there that you, your landscaping is done to either enhance some things that you want or keep, you know, if you will, deer from just chewing everything up. I, I just throw that out there as... That's the reality we deal with. Trying right, to keep but the I mean, deer if it's in the document, I, I don't know if there's a way of wording something like that to... Yeah, I'm yeah, sure we can... Spe species that are not... Uh, are not uh, uh, tasty. Tasty. <laughs> <laughs> we have the concept. It's just a matter of putting out the words. concept. That's all that matters. Right. And mo most of these are all... Every application would be subject to the review of the landscape consultant. Right. Um, and they've always identified species that, for winter, for animals, or things that will just enhance the area overall. Right. And I guess the only other thing was page 103. You just need to add a word in the se first sentence. It just needs another word in it. It's not a big deal. First sentence. Page 103. From, could be a basic word in there. <laughs> That's it? Could be a from or something else in there to give a little. Needs word. another word. I just leave it at that. You put the word in your word. Yeah. Good job, Dave. That's all I have here. Anybody else have any initial okay. thoughts, comments? We'll pull up the charts and kind of go through some highlights of the. Details. I, can go through, I can give you a few other things. I'm sure. Just, um, I guess the word, every time you hear cluster development, people sometimes go, ah, you know, somebody's, you know, I don't know if that's the phrase we want to use. I saw that used a bunch of times where we're saying mixed use is not necessarily what I always, you know, I always picture cluster development as, a lot, as something different in my mind than mixed use. And I, you know, I, I see the word clustered and clustered development. Sometimes that might give a different um, concept. Just a concept. So maybe word choice where I saw clustered. Yeah, I don't know what's better to say, you know, besides saying dense, but um, something along those lines, I yeah, saw that used quite a few. People definitely don't like that word. <laughs> but, right, yeah, exactly. But, you know, I saw the word cluster, and I go, well, that doesn't always give the right image either of what people are trying, or, you know, okay. what maybe we're trying to do. Since, you know, mixed use is a little of everything, not mm -hmm. necessarily, you know, I think cluster's always thought residential. 
Yeah, when well, we use it for right. applications currently as a cluster. Well. Right, so that might have that might be not what the word choice that we want to use. Yeah, I agree. That's a good point. And Thank that, you. That, that, for instance, uh, that was just like on page number 77, like in terms of just write the Manitoba Lake mixed use district 6.2, where it says this mis mixed use district was established to protect the natural resources and scenic quality of the site while allowing control <coughs> cluster development. It just mm -hmm. Is that what it is? I don't know. It's, that's, to me, it sounds more residential in terms of cluster development. Um, another thing that I, I think we're going to talk about, are we going to talk about the zoning map or the map later? In terms of <coughs> zones A, B, C, D. They just, they're still big blobs in a sense where they don't necessarily know if, how defined they are. But uh, on the south end, I'll, I'll say closer to the Genesee Conservation League, their parcel actually goes farther down along the creek, but this blob kind of comes out there right up to the edge of the creek. And the opening of zone D should really kind of follow along the creek as opposed to zone A push right up next to the creek, where really that should be zone D following along the whole entire parcel edge. And I think, you know, once we talk about the boundary map, you know, maybe we come back to that once, once we define what the boundary is, I mean, we show the, the bubble map kind of follows the original bubbles that goes right. across the creek. Right. We're really not proposing to, to rezone things across the creek, so obviously we need to tighten that map up to kind of follow that, but we didn't want to, we put together a sample or a, you know, at least something, a talking point for the, the boundary map, but then once we do the boundary map, I think then we can kind of back into this one and then tighten this map up to follow. Yeah. And the only other thing I noticed was um, on the chart for uh, the Manitou Lake, which I guess is page, mine's really like 84, I think. Um, the setbacks, I don't know, if we want to leave it so open-ended or somehow maybe define some kind of standards along the edge of the creek, just some kind of, because in theory of zone A there is, goes right up to the edge of the creek and we don't have any minimum setbacks, what would keep someone from designing some tall structure six stories high right along the edge of the creek, or that might be covered too if you push zone D and kind of wrapped around the edge of the creek and maybe you would eliminate that since no structures are allowed in zone D. Mm -hmm. That might solve that purpose right there, That's but I just noticed that was the only, uh, Everything says minimum setbacks to meet fire and building codes, but then that's I guess to the other buildings. But I mean, in a sense, this it, is its own zoning district, so yep, do you yeah. really, you know, those codes are met in different areas. If it's zoned commercial, you know, however, but here this is its own zone. It really can't refer to something else. I don't think it's a good point. And in our EPODs, we require a 75 foot setback from uh, as, as a stream. So we could we could reference that as the requirement. Okay. We so tried to have in the point. document that it needs to be 100 foot from any other residential use, but I think in incorporating <coughs> EPODs into that, yeah. you know. I mean, because in theory, this is its own zoning district, so you can't really refer to saying meet minimum requirements because, well, we really don't have any requirements once we set up a new district. Good point. And I think that was, those are my major ones. Okay. Didn't feel much shorter, though, the manual. <laughs> No. Well, we added in by the time it got longer we, after that the additional. The change. text yeah. of the document got shorter, but we added in the application. Help. If you yeah. take the appendix stuff off, it it's shorter. Yeah, true. But we added the application forms in. We added in checklists. <laughs> Check, we added yeah, in the checklist device. Um, you know, the development application process. So, yeah, I think we cut down on a lot of the verbiage in the background and some of the circular Plus conversation. Plus, we, we had a lot of spacing issues too. Like just. One thing that bothered me, because I have probably a little bit of OCD when it comes to reading documents, when <coughs> paragraphs just kind of stopped and went on to another page, where there's only like another sentence of it, yeah, it's not good. that really annoyed me. So it, some things shifted, there were spaces that were brought in in some pages, and sometimes you had to add a page just to get the right spacing. So that's how we kind of came up with some extra pages, with not a complete so. reduction. I agree. I forgot my laser pointer. You did forget laser pointer. I don't have one. Okay. You keep going. Can you get? Can you put the causes list on this too? Yes. Got that. Okay. Um, does anyone else have other comments that they caught while they're reading the document? No. All right. I'll jump into what Andrew had already gotten started with. Um, give me a second and go to the zones page. Here. 
So what Andrews was referring to was this area here where A was encroaching into the creek and near the near GCL, uh, bringing zone D down around here. And what we had prepared um, for the committee to look at, and we sent it out in the original email, was this document, this map of what is recommended currently as the hard lines of the district itself uh, for Manitow Lake. And this follows all the property boundaries that are currently out there. And then we would have to adjust the zones in the bubble uh, to match this eventually. But before we took that step, um, part, of, part of this meeting is to get the committee's approval, get the okay that we're all comfortable with the boundaries that are recommended on this map um, for the overall district. And then we can make the bubble map with the zones fit into what that district boundary actually is then. Um, can you blow that up blow that up a little bit for yeah. everybody to see better? It's not really I know it's, it's I apologize really for the does that help a little bit kind of get you can't see the parcel lines unfortunately from the <coughs> areas, but it gives you an idea of what we're looking at for the area old Penn Old Penfield Road is right here, obviously. Um, the darker lines, <clears throat> the darker areas, all the area that Dolomite or Old Castle currently owns, um, and we've walked all that together, I think, on a couple of occasions. The area right next to his uh, cursor there is, uh, okay. yeah, that's good. Uh, pull that over a little bit so we can. The open space area that the town has um, adjacent to the Dolomite property. Um, Obviously, that's nothing's going to happen to that property. Um, so our intent was to get input from you as to whether we should have it in there or not have it in there. This is the area here that we have is open space, and that's going to stay open space. We're not nothing's going to happen to that other than what it is, is that today. The gentles area. Yeah, well, gentles portion, portion, this is portion of it. But generals is, I think a portion of generals is in this area too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 1080 is still part of the farmstead. Yeah. Which goes straight back. It's hard to see. It stops it goes there. It's, it's right there. It comes down to the road and comes back. Uh, my initial reaction was that I was a little concerned about um, how that would interact with the properties around the neighborhood here. And I actually went out this morning to take some photographs, and we do have photographs of the neighborhood. Um, when I went out and looked at it, I think that if we were to look at this more in terms of uh, residential mixed use with various types of residential use versus commercial, it would probably blend in pretty well with the character of the neighborhood. Right across the street is the Ellens Creek Valley Townhouse Project. There are a couple of houses in this neighborhood over here, uh, but it is kind of isolated. Um, you can't, these people here are buffered with a berm along, along the road across the street. They are set back a little distance from the area, but if this were to go to a mixed-use residential development, um, it might blend in very nicely with the, with the neighborhood if you thought that that would be an appropriate use. We were looking at these properties here and questioning whether or not you would agree that they would or would not be, you know, an appropriate area for mixed-use. Can you get the picture here? Yeah, why don't you pull up some photos? So those were always part of the bubble. The town property was part of the bubble. The, I mean, even the park was part of the bubble. So obviously the park is not being rezoned. The town property is not being rezoned. The areas of the creek aren't being rezoned. So we're kind of pulling that in. And those were a couple of the, you know, kind of three out parcels that weren't immediately part of, you know, what we've been kind of considering the main Manitou Lake part. And we wanted to... Yeah, we wanted to talk about it with this group, see what your thoughts were, make sure... You know, On that that's parcel map, can you show where the old garages were? In theory, what our zone C is? Can you kind of point out where does that actually sit in relation to this? The old uh, Dolomite garage? The ones they tore down, yeah. Yeah. Flat. They sit right about there, right about there, right? That's, right about there, right? Right that's where the old garage is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is more up on the top right. part, so it may seem a little bit separate, and that's why we had questions about it. We've kind of been centralizing our conversation more about the lake, the lower right. portions. But this area was always in that study bubble, so now that we're honing in on what we think the parcels are, those were three pieces we said, does it make sense, doesn't it make sense? Part of the reason I ask is because 
we said that all be zone D, which would in theory then be you and wouldn't be doing anything with it. And that's part of that's part of the the bubble conversation is right. you know is to look at that. Do those make sense? You know, if it was residential, you know, some townhomes or not, or is that encroaching and that's a nice buffer to the rest of what Penfield Road is and keep the rest of it. You know, what is mixed use more down in you know what's the the lake area. Yeah, the grade change starts running about here and it goes down the hill. This area here obviously is, is all flat and is very visible from Penfield Road. These are the two houses I was talking about earlier. Um, I'm sitting basically in um, in, in Penfield's area. Well, I'm right across the street from them. Uh, so uh, that's the corner house. As you can see the hill turns just east of that, yeah, east of the gray house. Yeah, the farm market and then the market stand is actually to the left, I think is the next photo. Here's the farm market yeah. to the left. And then that piece goes straight back. We then own property that's you know to the west of that that could act as a buffer that you know would never be developed. So that's kind of we thought whether that's a buffer or whether keeping this as its current residential character you know, was more appropriate. So if you did that, would you in theory have a zone E? Potentially, yeah. you because could, zone C, yeah. you're still looking at three-story. I mean, based on what we have right now, what fit, you know, what fits into that, or does nothing fit into that? And then we kind of say, yeah. I mean, that, that's these were some outliers. Just that was in the bubble. We thought, you know, we need to talk about it. No, it doesn't make sense. It should be just in the lower area. Leave it alone. Or no, it may have some potential for residential well, type uses only, and then flat land to, we could come up with a. I mean, but it could be developed, right. you know, I mean, right now it's single family residential, so it could be Ryan Homes, it could be mm -hmm. any developer come in and you know, put, subdivide it, put homes, put a, a road in there and do something else, is whether that made more sense to be, you know, a mix of townhouses and cottages or, you know, you said you could invent to come up with a zone E that would be a residential only piece that, you know, met more with townhouses or something without a commercial component or something. Are those all currently just residential zone? Yes. yes. Okay. The farm too? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, I can pull up the zoning map in the back too. which includes the lake right now. So these are the three parcels here. This is the piece that's town owned land. And then the other holdings of the Dolomite group is this. And then there's a couple little. So these were kind of the little up parcels. We right. kind of looked at those that was in the overall bubble. We that never kind of talked about those. You that, yeah. Should we leave them as they are? Uh, they continue to be single family residential. They can be subdivided. Uh, they're half acre zoning. So you could have half acre lots, single family housing, or might that make sense as a zone E or something else? But we wanted to see what the thoughts of the group were. Ruth, you look like you have something to say. Well, it seems as though with the development uh, that's going to occur at some point uh, on the hill, you're going to have an awful lot of traffic here if you allow more, more development. I mean, this is this is your guys' document, so that's why we're just posing, we're just floating stuff out there. I mean, ultimately, this is the group that has to say yes. This is what we want. No, we think it should remain single-family residential. Keep the traffic down. Yeah, if you wanted if, this, if, if the committee wanted this line to change and now follow these parcels, and that would remain single-family residential. Wouldn't prohibit it from it being is. developed. I mean. Right. I mean, that's the one thing I realized. If it's single-family residential, you can still develop a whole track of houses on there, which would, that would still, you know, you still have your issues if you're worried about traffic and things like that. That could still, in theory, just like what the lake is right now, that huge area could be homes just filled in there. So it, uh, the only, I guess, if, if you wanted to protect that area, if, if that's the way you want to go, you'd say, okay, include that, but we want to make that the zone D. Zone D doesn't allow structures on it except for a little ancillary structures I think that's all allowed and that would if that was what we wanted to do that's one way to protect that 
Well, how many but acres I think are we talking there? About four acres, five acres? Uh, I mean, that's, that's not owned by the, the 1080 is a pretty sizable chunk, but I believe there's the grade falls off somewhere yeah. Yeah. part way back. It starts to drop off. I think the only thing, Andres, we need to be careful of if we zoned it all zone D is potentially you're, you're basically almost stripping their development rights right. of, what well, they, of what they currently have. Right. I think you don't, you potentially yeah. open up yourself to a lawsuit from those property owners. They want to sell their property at a, well, then they can't, it's a reasonable value. Right. And if we just arbitrarily you know, made it zone D, now you're stripping what development rights they'd have off of it. So I, right. I think that's the only danger of just making it that's basically right. something less than what it is today. I think either you'd, you'd leave it a single family residential or you come up with another option of I mean, equal to or, of equal to or, or right. higher, I think most people are comfortable if you're going to rezone their property to something that would increase the value of it. They're open to that, but I think if right. we... No, I'm, I'm just kind of giving her a scenario. Of that's yeah, I, I, that's the only issue I'd see as a, a fallback would be if we just said, yeah, let's just make it zone D, I would assume those homeowners would have some I concern would about... I would me, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. You've lost the value in your property of... of yeah, I don't know if they're ready to sell or want to sell, but if and when they do, you're basically taking their... It's the value of their yeah. property away doing that. But, but it, like he says, it's your document and it's your recommendation, so. We just kind of saw that as part of the bubble. We've always kind of been concentrating on more of the lake portion of it. I think we've talked about that. We'll go around it and make sure, you know, we've included all the pieces you think should be part of it. We can come back to the bubbles and you know, talk about, you know, how to wrap those around. But this was three out parcels or three pieces that and I don't think we had kind of talked about it earlier so in the conversation. So the question, um, like choice one, adjust the bubble and take it away from that area and don't include it in this project, or leave it there but be thoughtful about what it becomes? Are those the two? Yeah, reasons? I mean, I guess the bubble is, is gone. Um, you know, if we're going to rezone, we have to rezone to property lines. We have to do a, a description at the end of the day, so we can't. I mean, we've looked at it as a study bubble of everything and anything in it. Now's the time we need to hone it down to these are the parcels that are in, these are the parcels that are out. The bubble can be the zoning or the A, B, the and zones. C within it. I mean, that's a flexible density bubble, but the rest of it we need to decide or the group needs to decide, you know, this is in, this is out, because we'll have to do a, a boundary description. Ultimately, when the town <coughs> zones zones it, it's going to say, you know, bearings and distances and Know, what is in and, and what is out on that. I'm not really familiar with the 250 boundaries, but is there a zone that 250 has that could in theory be put onto, say that farmland up there that would would prohibit, but also would, you know, because 250 is not really a vertical. Is there something that's similar that's already kind of, that people have looked at and said, you know, this is kind of open land similar to what 250 may have. The 250 has a, not really? had their zone C and 250 um, is a strip of land along Penfield Center Road that basically is restricting it to one acre zoning maximum. So that would be a, basically a downgrade from what this currently is here. But they did have something separate saying we're okay with mixed use here. We want to have a, a buffer to you know existing more rural character. So they have a zone C in there. This is it has to be a minimum or maximum of minimum of one acre zoning with a single family one to two acre lots in there but they did something similar so you could say we want to create an area E would have no commercial component to it would be townhouse low, apartment low density residential cottage I mean it would be obviously a higher density than single family half acre zoning right. but it wouldn't allow for whatever six, six story building six-story building or any I mean you could say no commercial in that location or no it could be two types of residential you know it'd, it'd be a mix of residentials you could have a mix of townhouses and cottage apartments yeah. or garden apartment you know whatever you know mix you want to call if it but it would be a B of what you're up half of that area the one advantage of B is that you got 30 percent recommended for open space so even though you're increasing four to six units to me that's the the least dense of what you currently are proposing in that area because of requiring the 30 percent open space and then having four to six units you know is less than the other two so whether you use that go to a B or take B and then
downgrade from that if your concept is you don't want it as intense. That's one way to look at it. Now, all the other current townhomes across the road are two-story. Mm, I'm, I'm not sure all of them are, but the majority of them are. Are there any higher than? Is no, 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 okay. not at all. So that's why I, I mean that's why I think you could do a modification of a zone B strip out. It can't be six-story; it can be a two-story max, but it could involve, you know, be more of. Well, know, B is only three-story. On be more of an three. MR with a, you know, but require a mix, so it's not just an apartment complex or it's not just a, you know, a townhouse strip. It would require a mix of different units, similar to mixed use. It would require sidewalks, require pedestrian connectivity, a lot of the other elements, but would take out, take commercial off the table if that's thought of the group or, you know, any other component we thought would be. The only thing I wonder about is if there's any element of that strip of land that could service the lake area if you know i mean wild wild dreaming blue sky stuff but if there was something going on uh, a development at the lake area and somebody wanted to turn the upper area into a parking lot with a tram system that ferried people down into the lake area you know it just it just seems like i mean I, that's the only yeah i mean know, Um, I wish Jack Odenbach had been here tonight because there are a couple of questions that um, I would I would like to ask him, and, and one of them has to do with this zone B. Um, I'm wondering uh, if we're talking about two, three-story structures there. Has there been any test soil testing done in that area to determine whether uh, it's feasible? I mean, all of this all this is predicated on. Uh, so whoever buys it, and I mean, this is just says this is the maximum you can build. They come in and it's all muck soils, then you can't, you can't build there. I mean, that's what's... The, the other question I had is kind of related to that. Um, I know that last, I think it was last fall at some point, that Old Castle had uh, put the property up for auction. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I assume since it wasn't sold that nobody... Met their the last I heard, they are in negotiations with somebody. We don't know who it is or what their intent is. Um, that's why we're kind of proceeding forward until they come out of the woodwork to say, "Hey, I'm the new owner." We're proceeding ahead as as we have been. If they come up and say, "I want it," "I don't want it," let's you know, then so we can, we can change course. But to any of the negotiations or any of them they, they haven't closed it or sold it so basically at this point they haven't released the name to us they said they are negotiations they have some due diligence they have to do on their part on the site to you know clean up a little more and do some other things um, that's as much information I say I hope, was hoping Jack was here you know as well I've you know emailed back and forth with them um, that's as much as we know is that the, in the initial auction it didn't sell but I think they've been in negotiations with somebody since then um, what the new owner's intent is, we don't know at this point. We did send a courtesy copy out to Jackson. So they, he could share that with whoever the potential buyer is, but we haven't heard anything back from anybody on it. So. so at this point, you know, as far as the committee, you know, I think we continue forward it as we have been. If circumstances change, we'll, you know, let the group know what, what has happened, what's come out of it. If we need to reconvene, we reconvene. Um, but at this point, you know, without knowing, I'd hate to change course, you know, one way or the other and, you know, kind of stall this longer than, it, than it's kind of gone on already. But Mark, if you look at the true use of what you're talking about for mixed use, realistically for that property, you don't want to take out the potential for a commercial use because in theory that will also service the other townhomes and everything in the area to be able to bite to that you know, as far as, you know, a minimal type of commercial use, you know, where you put it on one, you yep. know, first floor, you know, some small things. So I think you know, just pulling that out of that, you're really eliminating the main purpose of mixed use in that it should be uh, accessory to the other areas around it. Dave echoes exactly what I was going to say. Okay. I, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. 1080 plot, I think if we're going to include it, 
it has to be mixed use. Why it's say use. residential? It already is that. It doesn't just kind of, it's kind of like grabbing the bubble and saying, well, how can we make it stay so, residential? So to me, if you go with a B, unless you don't want to limit the height to less than three stories. I mean, at least my paper here says three stories, so it fits. And it's buffered by one side by full open space, so you've got... So virtually, if you have two stories in the front of it and three in the back, you've it buffered every, all the other aspects. Right, and I think there's, that land, too, if you go far enough to the top of the screen there, that's getting close to where there's, in theory, an overlook, right? I mean, yep. that has some huge potential in terms of anything you might put there, if it was commercial or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. nice views in terms of that area. Um, that could be a nice area to develop, actually, maybe nicer than what's down below. That's a great point. Um, how does everyone else feel? So basically, with, with those comments, we would be looking to adjust zone B so we'd leave to the, this area here and leave these properties in the new district. Now, zone B says three stories are 45 feet. And that's what Dave was just talking about. Is that are we comfortable with three stories on those properties? Would you see it? Or one thing you could do two, if you two stories if you wanted to limit that well, I think more it, and keeping yeah, the balance. Your main emphasis of this is to be to be staging it back is, is in your document. So in theory, if you're at the road, the width you got if you're at two stories, once you go back in and you're three stories, you're far enough away from everyone else, if you will, because your only neighbors I mean, are would, the existing ones at Road. We've dealt with that a lot in, in 250, in the 250 group, as we said, you know, that allows up to four stories. We've said we don't want it on, on 250, we, want, we don't want a four-story building right adjacent to the road. We so said you can be two stories adjacent to the road and then step it back in, so if you're in the middle of the property, or 250's got a lot of elevation drops. If you drop elevation in a four-story building from the top of 250, wouldn't I mean, be looking down on the roof. You know, it doesn't seem that much. I mean, elevation-wise, the YMCA's pretty much a four-story building as it is now fits into the character so I think you know if you had some of those similar parameters you can't be three stories up against the road you could be two stories initially and then as it steps back into the property you know could rise up to a, a three-story building I'll say yes I don't know uh, uh, making it a B yeah I, I think B I, I think that makes sense or at least you know, consider that area B I don't know if the whole I mean Not what portion of it you can but maybe most of it I think it's it that probably, might be some of the, that might turn into more of the valuable land right there, as opposed to the whole entire pit down there. Probably following these these property lines. Probably makes sense. Well, in theory, if someone bought the land and bought all the other properties around there, I don't know if you'd want to limit them right to those lines. And I mean, that's the part we've shown as a bubble. So if they do buy all the, the right. pieces and they come to the planning board and say, "Hey, we bought both these pieces. It makes more sense. This area is flat. Can we flex this a little bit?" That's the one piece we'll leave as a do bubble. We have so that allows for. Yes, bubbles to move we said to the, at the Board of Jurisdiction would have okay. determination to say hey, it doesn't make sense in that piece, but you know, you can, would make a little more sense over here. Bit. There is some steep slope areas in the back that drop off. Again, same as with the soils. It's not saying you're guaranteed that density. It's not guaranteed that height. you still got to come and do your due diligence, and you'd have to meet our EPOD codes for steep slopes and water course, which would you know, minimize some of the development on, on those areas. You would have to fit your development you know proportional to you know, what the land conditions are the soils you come in and the soils are all muck well you may not get three or four stories in that area maybe a smaller or lower height that's the due diligence that you know that's the buyer beware you know we're just putting in the parameters you know this document the ordinance basically just sets the parameters of here's the rules you got to play by you come in you have to do your homework you know do some soil tests go out there make sure it's developable look at the steep slopes look at the pods look at you know the other environmental factors and then you know, come in with a, an appropriately designed plan that, you know, meets all those requirements. AJ, you were, had a comment or? Well, I was thinking that the zones, if they were flexible in this, I guess, a somewhat similar fashion to like the 278 law, where the uh, board could adjust them little bit here and there that's you can get a lot more creative projects and that's what we've we've tried in the document and I don't maybe we haven't captured that totally but it's we've tried to show it as is a, a bubble so it's not hard and fast two property lines so that it come in and you know they have to sh prove to the board that they can you know make it work and this would work out better if we laid it out this way and 
you know, leaves the board some flexibility to say, okay, yeah, the density may make more sense here, the soils here are bad, let's do something lower over there. So we've tried to... Could we base that on a percentage? Is there, I mean, if someone sat down and said, hey, we could allow a flexibility, I mean, once these are a little more defined, to say, give and take, you know, whether it's 5%, <coughs> percent so that way someone doesn't say, hey, you know, it'd be great if we could just push zone C all the way here, and so all we're can incorporate all D back here to cover this. You know, something more because I mean we have these zones for a reason because we've all kind of sat down and said this is kind of what we like. Yep. Um, so it stays kind of. I you know, I I have, I totally understand that you want to be able to adjust things a little bit because it makes total sense because until someone shows up and says this is what I'd like to do, it's all kind of arbitrary. So you're yeah. saying stay within a ten percent variation. Some number. I I don't know if ten percent is the number, but just something that says gives the board some flexibility. They come in and says. The soils here are horrible. That's zone A. I'm not getting any development in that section, but it makes more sense over here. I have solid foundation, mm -hmm. you know, leaving the, the future board some flexibility to move that around, but not revamp the whole thing and say, oh, okay, we had zones, let's throw them out the window and let's just make it all zone A. And right, because before you know right. it, zone A wraps halfway around the entire lake and then, uh, yeah. well, it works, but <laughs> that's not what we'd want. Okay, yeah, we can look at it. Or or incorporating some flexibility yeah. you know, as more as a <coughs> percentage with that. Definitely. Okay, so we kind of talked about those three upper areas. Everybody's thumbs up around the room. Everybody's good with the three areas. <laughs> yeah. Is there anyone that's opposed to it? <laughs> okay. <coughs> Just making sure we have consensus. Um, so we all and then we're going to go back to that map and see why don't we kind of work our way around and then I think we'll kind of work our way back into the bubbles. And you know, we talked about that zone B, we can incorporate that. Um, well, that is really hard to see the property lines yep. Which one do you want on that view. Most of the other pieces are parts, I believe everything that is owned by Dolomite. the Dolomite group, so um, right other than those three in, in the front, those pieces go on the other side of the creek, and you can kind of see the creek in the middle. I don't know if you have the yep. laser pointer, you can kind of highlight on the screen, it's kind of hard to see, here's the creek that comes through here, goes up that way, there's an odd little triangle wedge shape here, you can see the property line comes up this way and down is one piece, it's owned by the door, <coughs> the other piece kind of comes over here, the town owns a piece over here that has access down in, um, we maintain or have a trail there from the trails committee now, there's another odd shape kind of piece over here, so now the Dolomite group is looking to sell the property in whole, so we've kind of said, okay, if they're going to sell it in whole, you know, we'll include all those pieces together. Um, but as Andres shared, most of those, at least on the other side of the, definitely on the other side of the creek and along the, the creek banks, we've shown those, or the group has shown those in a, in a zone D. Ancillary things, if it was, you know, a, a dock or something that, you know, was part of the trails or something else, but it didn't substantiate, you know, buildings on those areas. So you can kind of see the creek again following through here. And then as it goes back into the park, you can see the, the park limits here, the ball fields and everything else. We've kind of buffered those. There is a large hill in here that kind of naturally buffers, buffers that zone so B. So are you saying that without those incorporated, if it's all zone D, whoever the buyer would be, why would they ever want to buy those parcels? Yeah, they're going to end up being... I mean, land, all they're doing is paying taxes. They're going to be landlocked never do parcels. I mean, they've shown it... In and they had a map to consolidate all into one piece. I don't think that's been filed yet. There is five separate pieces to it. See, there's one piece here, piece here, another piece over here, and then a little piece. So there's one piece, two pieces here, the main mm -hmm. part of the lake, which is split. Third it's piece is over as one, here. Right? They're going to sell so it as sell one. one. So it's the buyer's going to have a whole lot of choice whether they find the whole thing or... Right. But the, the benefit to the, the, the buyer is, yes, kind of similar. We're downgrading what is developable over on these areas here, but obviously upgrading the, upgrading the, the main part of the property. Yeah, but you're only downgrading to the extent that he has some recreational activity that he wants the rest of it, it may work for them. Yeah, we're just basically saying we're not looking to have structures, you know, over in these areas or Around buildings or development, recognizing the pods, or recognizing the creek and the buffer areas, you know, with that, recognizing the sensitivity of you know, Ellison Park here, you know, there is a hill that kind of buffers this piece. So we set a, you know, lower density development there. The zone A is the main part. I think Andres brought up a good point. The creek comes up this way over here. So I think zone A, 
you know, becomes a little too far. You know, you know, I think that should kind of pull back and at least you know follow the creek lines, keep zone D over the creek to yeah. reflect those EPOD buffers. Yeah, we just talked about B. So I think you know take D down this way. We had zone C as an up, as an upper area, and then we've talked about you know doing B right here. kind of back in, in up in this area here. What's the group thoughts about that with the you know modification we'll pull up where the creek is and kind of lop this lump off on the end of that again recognizing the environmental nature of the creek staying away from that keeping a, a buffer to the adjoining properties on this side the zone d kind of buffers the you know the neighbors up above on panorama trail you know this would, would buffer the neighbors over on this end if we took this off this does drop in and then the zone d also buffers ellison heights or excuse me Ellison Park on the other side. It makes sense. Yeah, this has to be open enough, though, to get a developer that's coming in here. If he's really going to look at it as a planned development. He's not, he's not going to look at you know, individual spots once until he gets his test, his test done. Yeah, that's, so, that's yeah. why I think having some flexibility of the zone. Yeah. We've. You know, the group has, has kind of talked about these areas make more sense to have some more density here, a little, maybe a little bit less there. But I think, you know, as to your point, you know, and to, to Bill's point earlier, is until you have soil tests done, until you have other environmental concerns and, and everything evaluated, you know, you'll need some flexibility at that point to shuffle things around and to... But the other thing that's going to affect this parcel and how many units can end up there is the access. Yes. Old Pettifield Road is not the prime access. Yes, there is. Currently, the only single access point is here. Um, we have had conversations with uh, the Parks Department um, from Monroe County. <coughs> they have not, a, to date, expressed any interest in having an access through public property to a private development. Zach, if you could pull down a little bit. Uh, sorry, yeah, pull down the other way. There is private property over here. We haven't explored that, but obviously there is some potential they could you know, negotiate with you know, private owners here for an access to Blossom Road in the future, um, you'd have to cross the creek, you'd have to do some, you know, there's a lot of impact to that, but. Are you talking about the old Daisy Flower Mill? Right? There's Daisy Flower yeah. Mill, there's, there's another couple properties next to it. The Daisy Flower Mill is a historic property, so that offers its own levels of concern over there. So I'm not saying that, you know, it's easy or feasible, but, you know, the property does, you know, come very close to abutting that. Thomas Cove Road, you know, you guys have a, a limited access as it is today, so. You wouldn't want to send any more traffic. I'm not, I'm not saying it, it's, no. it's, it's, it's impossible to get the Blossom Road, but it would be very challenging at first. <clears throat> any more discussion on the zone bubbles? We can modify that, email it to the group. You know, make sure you guys are on board with those, we'll, you know, we can look at some language on, you know, kind of a percentage did or the, flexibility. Did zone B allow for the stepping back? Like they were saying, you know, we wouldn't want we put structures that in the, right in there, but we want somehow to, you know, especially up top that zone B where we're, you know, considering adding that. Yep. I think, you know, you would want that pushed back because there's quite a bit of distance to go back where you could then have the three, you know, the, the three structures where they really don't uh, encroach. Yeah, on the and, road. and you don't want to, you know, Again, you don't want a four-story building right up against Old Penfield Road either. As you drive right. down the road, you know you're looking up at a four-story building or something imposing. Same thing on you know on Penfield Road here. You don't want a four-story building right up against it. But if it's two at the street, went back it was three or you know grew from there. I think being down in the the basin here is a little bit different. As you come down in the hill and right. you know, there was a, a six-story building there, it kind of gets lost in the in the valley. But um, I think we have that language in there universally that you know kind of buffers to the existing conditions steps back in and then you know the height can grow a little bit based on the on the development okay. um, do we get the the table or the checklist um, we can bring up the table see if we got there's any other Concerns on the table, you're going to have to blow that for you. Yep. So just looking at the table, um, whoops, wrong buttons. 
Dave, you already had, we have your comment to fix the seven to make it six. Um, there were the changes in the zone D, um, just to make it, obviously it's, it is more restrictive, but it's more natural and environmental use. Did anyone see any other uh, items in the table that stood out to them as a concern or something that need discussion? One item I think we should talk about is the permitted use of the percentages. That's one thing we've heard from some of the, you know, the developers and some of the, you know, uh, John, I think you were bringing up before, is, is forcing a, a, a percentage. You know, with mixed use, we want to have a mix of commercial, mix of different uses, but forcing is a percentage number. We added in a comment here, and I don't know what the, the group's comfort level is, is basically that we give a caveat so if somebody came in with a market study showing commercial just doesn't work in this location here, we'll have our mix of uses. You're still required to have two uses or three uses or whatever, but if the market study says they can come and show to the board, commercial just doesn't work. If I know it says 25%, we can only do five or 10. It gives some flexibility there than an arbitrary number. So we added, wanted to, we added that line, but I want to make sure this group was comfortable with that. that what have your consultants said about that? They were pretty adamant that the they say that, that commercial the, is the a bottom. The, you know, they say commercial is, a, is critical heavy. to the success of mixed use development, or else you wind up with a PUD. Right. So that's why we didn't take the percentage out. There's still a percentage you should achieve, but if they come back and show that there's something different or the market has changed, there's some flexibility for the board. So we kind of hedged on that when we didn't take it out altogether and said, you know. Yeah, but if I come back as a developer and tell you I only can justify 5%, is it something that you want to accept? I mean, one of the bigger pluses, generally speaking, if you look at your tax revenue, is the benefit, generally speaking, with your commercial use. And that's one of the biggest things, even with the comp plan, when he came back and says it's, you know, the taxes, you know, and if that's one of the features, you know, trying to get the commercial use to cut on the taxes. Do these projects have to be tax neutral? It does not say that, no. <laughs> but I, I you well, know, this is all going to be driven by economics anyway, and, and without any visibility down in there to, the access you've got, it's going to be a tough commercial location. I'll be very honest with you. Well, if we really believe that, then maybe we should be talking about PUDs instead of MUDs. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, I, I, just, I bring that up. I mean, we had a, it as a 25% percentage, but I know we've heard both sides of the conversation on it. We've tried to kind of hedge our bets. You know, basically, we're recommending a 25% number but understanding that you know you may not get there but if you leave it to the board of jurisdiction you come in and say we can fit one percent commercial the board can say no that's not really what we're looking for here that's not the intent of this district go back and try again um. yeah I, I kind of come back I, I kind of agree with Dave still too where you know you say it's mixed use that is the intent uh, if it wasn't then leave it as is already you know residential we know that would you know you can put those anywhere you want and that works the whole point of this was to say we want to call us a mixed use zone uh, in that just go back to the um, what the consultant said you know there's a certain minimum you want to really achieve to make it work in theory if they say that it really does work so I mean if you're recommending 25 do you want to put a bare minimum that it can be because to recommend it means that I come in with my study and I say, I can't justify any. I'm going to build all residential. Well, because you say it's only recommended, that means I can do that. Well, I mean, I, we can check with the consultant and he says at a bare minimum you have to have 10% or 15%. We can put a, uh, you know, a floor to that, say 25 is recommended. Well, I, but I, guess I think putting, he thought the minimum was 25. And maybe yeah. it is. And I'll just reconfirm that with him before I'm, we... I'm concerned begin. that the people that are going to come in with residential are going to say that the clubhouse is is a commercial non-residential use, that the rental office sure is a is. commercial non-residential use, that sure the maintenance is. building is a commercial non-residential use, and what you wind up with is a whole bunch of, uh, of living units and, and nothing that's open to the public. Yeah, and plus you're wasting everyone's time. You get a developer that says, oh, look, well, they says or it could be justified, and also they come in and spend all this time at work, and everyone goes, oh, sorry, that's not intended. Well, that's what it says. Well, 
it's what it says, but it's not really what we want. And then no one's happy. So I mean, if we want to set a minimum, and I, that 25% didn't seem like it was that high, really, for what we're, our intent was, I can, we I should can say kind of 20%, 25%. If, if what's, not, what's your bare minimum number you think? We have 25% in there. Is that a goal, or is that you know the bare minimum number that you think is viable? And right. Okay. We can contact him and come back with a group on that. Again, yeah. we were trying to... They like put in a variation of 5% either way. And, and that's, so, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the... Another the, idea. If you're going to, if you're going to allow escapes, why don't you make it 50%? <laughs> well, that's right. You really shouldn't have the <laughs> escape. Then they can escape it down to 35. <laughs> <laughs> right, instead of 25 down to 10. <laughs> right. Or just have, this is what it is. And maybe that's the answer. That's just that's what it is and... But we're trying to. Yeah. Well, I just a remember him saying that the that the the characteristic reason why these units these projects have failed in other locations is that they did not have enough commercial for this very reason of putting the out where you didn't have to have. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I think that would be a that's in a sense scary language to have or could you know be changed like the. Well, I think we can. You could put some you know parameters to that a bare minimum of. Mm -hmm. 15 or 20 or right, so maybe 25 is the number. And but most people there are going to hit that bare minimum because that's what they're going to come in because it's more cost effective, yeah. typically. Okay, we can verify that. Any other? I think we transposed zone B and zone C if you go down to maximum dwelling units. Look at our last iteration. Let's see. 20 units here, zone B is 4 units, and we go back up to 6 to 12. So I think we got to do a little flip flop on the unit B. B should be a higher density than zone C is. So I think we did a little. I think it's just that cell. Cell got transposed on that piece. We can make that. Well, then the next question is do you want to go back then and you're going to go to C then for on the upper part? At 4 to 6 units per acre, maybe we meant a, Maybe we're looking at C up above rather than a. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at the four to six units rather than the six to twelve. Yeah, so. now we transpose these numbers here. So I guess that goes back to the conversation. What are you comfortable with up above? Right now, do you know what it is across and the townhouses across the road? What you would say it is per acre? Not off the top of my head, but I, I'll bet point. you it's about twelve units per acre. I'll bet it's not quite that high. Mm -hmm. There's some areas that are really dense. Well, yeah, yeah, but there was some of it that you couldn't develop. Right, that was the that was their with mm -hmm. or without the epods. That's an easy enough number to look. The assessor's got a number of units. We got a number of acres per parcel. We could pull that number up and all the slopes with another goal. Right, send it out to the group. I think maybe you just figure that you're going to label that to be four to six. So if you end up making that, but I think the other thing I was looking at is you were looking at you know more open space would be. In that upper area. Yeah, I think these both got transposed. You only got five there. Uh, minimum public space. Well, I think C C was what we wanted is five percent open space because that was a flat little, you know, since you pictured it as a little commercial pocket in a sense, or a little dense. Oh, building. true. That that yeah. only C was just the little mm -hmm. piece where right now it's probably a hundred percent impervious from being like from the, anything. So we said let it all be. Yeah. It's just that one. So we can transpose those, but what's the thoughts now that we're back up top looking at the Gentles property? Are we 4 to 6? Are we 6 to 12? Do we want a comparison to see what Allen's Creek is? And I'd like to see a comparison. I'd say that's an easy enough number we can pull tomorrow and send out to the group. You know. The assessor's got the number of units. We can pull out what the total acreage is, come back, it's 10 units per acre. You're kind of in that six. Those numbers are probably actually right because we said it'd probably be low because you wouldn't be able to get traffic back there unless you opened up the top in terms of, you know, that might actually be okay. correct. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting that C is, is the, right the previous where, piece. Where B is almost yeah, it's really bit. landlocked back in there. We're looking at the four to six. That might actually be what it's supposed to be. Well, then. well, let's. I'll we'll confirm all that. Maybe confirm. you need a zone E. 
I'd like not, I would like to look at other uh, townhouse projects besides Allen Creek as well, just to get a, an average of mm -hmm. maybe do two or three of them besides Allen Creek. You see, we just had a couple of Village Square, you know, recently one has kind of an well, infill piece. The, uh, uh, but I think if you're going back to, you know, if you don't, you see the way it is, it's 6 to 12 and, and be sorry, the way it is, I think you're fine just leaving B back up on the hill the way <coughs> you're talking. Yeah. As long as that 6 to 12 is staying with C, like, you know, not flip flop, and I think you're fine the way you what we talked about. Yeah, what's our bridge? But then I think you look into, I mean, you got four to six units per acre and you got a three story building. I mean, but I mean, I, so this I, mean, I guess that's the overall density. The back part of the property is mostly steep slope, so again, you, I hate to use the word cluster, Anders, but kind of you're clustering units to the front if the back part of the property is unbuildable. I mean, that's kind of similar to Allen's Creek Valley. They have, I mean, they're probably 20 units per acre in the upper portions where they have homes, they're all tied together, but then the steep slope areas and you take out the ponds and you take out the creek area and everything else, you're probably down to a 10 unit per acre by the time you average it out. Um, unless you subtract out your e-pot areas and then the acreage is left, you multiply by three to six or four to six. I, if you use the entire acreage and use four to six, then you wind up with more than six per unit on the Developable portion of the site, which is what we're striving for. Yep. So we've got to be sure that the, the in the calculation that they don't get double hit, lose their steep slopes and lose their density. Anything else on this chart we want to talk about, had concerns about? I think the only other thing is if that zone B is going up top, um, the minimum setbacks by fire and building code really need to be, might need to look at that a little more because this is a zone zone. There are no other setback requirements then. Yeah, down there, saying there are none. You were just set back from the other buildings. And that's and kind of why I said this more, you know, earlier I said, you know, this is its own zoning district it's not referring to anything else yep so those are all set in the actual district so whatever we say it is instead of saying minimum setbacks to meet fire and building code well the building code usually doesn't spec you know amongst the buildings you have a 10 foot separation right, but it's it. again based on firewalls if you have a higher firewall rating you could be closer or farther you know but we should have at least setbacks so front pressure. setbacks similar to we do you know in all zoning districts right okay Okay, um, that's mostly the chart we ran through. Any comments, concerns? We had, I see we had it in the application forms. Any thoughts on those concerns? That's mostly kind of staff related stuff. Went ahead, we read through the section. Um, this group and 250 recommended that the planning board be the board of jurisdiction. We kind of gave it a process similar to what we do with the planning board now. You come in first, you know, you can meet with PRC, talk with the group informally, you come in for a sketch plan, get a general, you know, rough idea of what the project is, you have a public hearing for that, and you get into preliminary final. So it's a basically a two-step process with that. Um, that's similarly how we kind of handle planning board now or a new applications so we follow that similar pattern. Sounds like everyone's good with that. Uh, we talked about the district boundary. So once we make these changes, we can email this stuff out to the group. Uh, is the group in consensus that you're supportive of this document as a whole? Yeah, with, with, those, with the changes, I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think with it's those bad. Given changes, it's a lot better than um, you know, Ultimately, it's it's this group that's going to be recommending to send it to the town board, and then. Obviously, we've got to have a public hearing. We'll be looking for you know, this group. You guys are the ones that you know, put this together to support it when it goes to the to public hearing. We're going to have you know, questions, concerns about it. Um, but ultimately, the town board's going to look back to this committee and the 250 committee and say, is, is this what you want? And you know, they're going to look for thumbs up and nodding heads to say, yeah, we've gone through it. We're happy with it. We're supportive of it. Obviously, not everybody's going to love every piece or part of it, but as a whole, we just want to make sure that 
you know everybody's happy with what what's being put forward and I say that it'll still have tweaks and changes and we're finding spelling errors and you know we still have some time to, you know, to tweak that stuff and you know are we missing any people from Anton tonight um Jack Odenbach. Jack Odenbach is one. I don't know who else is on the table. Anyone else who's got a blue name tag over there? Doug. Terry Smith, Tim Hampton, Bill Howell, Arthur Woodward. And all of a sudden you're missing a third to a quarter and we're saying, yeah, it's great for us, but. <laughs> I mean, we'll. <laughs> that's all I mean. That's, that's, that's more what I, I mean. I we'll, we'll, we'll mean, we'll email it to the but We'll make these changes. We'll email it out to the group. Right. You know, again, we'll ask for a. Uh, vote of confidence through email or whatever, not to put anybody in the spot, but just to, everybody kind of has one last chance. Obviously we can't you know, wait can't for everybody, but at least if we email everybody, they've had an opportunity to review the document. We've put it online. You know, we've tried to make it very you know, open and transparent to the public as well. Um, you know, we'll again email the group and say, is everybody okay with it? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Not saying we can't make minor tweaks, but yes, no. Um, Mark, this is just a, a, I guess, a personal thing, but on uh, page 85, um, I don't remember seeing the this in the original document. It may have been there. The simulation of the Manitown site. The uh, page 86 is was what the consultant. Or 80, I'm sorry. It's uh, you're it, right. 85 is actually a picture of yeah. Cornhill Landing. Yeah. 86 was a, a conceptual idea that the consultant, you know, put together on as we got into talking about six-story buildings. If we don't like the picture, we can take it out. Um, does anybody else have any feelings about that? I mean, it's a little scary to me, uh, but um, I, it's not what I had <laughs> envisioned. It's much more dense than I had envisioned, but. It's up to you guys. Well, if, it's, if that's too dense, I mean, that's that's zone A right there to a, you know, that could really, besides the step backs, this doesn't really have step backs on it, I don't think. I mean, well, zone A, zone A does. I know, but I did, did, did zone A, I don't know. <coughs> no? okay. I mean, this would be looking just at that one little right. piece. This isn't encompassing right. of the whole right. area. This is just kind of the, right. that's the heart of what could oh, be the, the most right. intense yeah. area. So that would be across the lake. In that piece, I mean, this was. I a, thought that was the intensity they were hoping to achieve to ensure the viability, viability. And sustainability of I mean, that was development. The, that was the concept that you know they put forth. I know this group was kind of mm -hmm. looking to something you know to visualize, and that's kind of what they came back with. Obviously, architectural style. You know, that's all for the eventual build out. The eventual build out to design. So you, might, you might not be able to. You might be able to get that type of design, but you're, you may not be able to get that density. That dense, yeah. Yeah. Just because you need I, parking I, facilities, I, you, I like this. You need you need all sorts of other things like to a, support that. And yeah, I can't imagine that that could be supported in terms of parking. I mean, you got to take in traffic. You got to take in yeah. soils. You got to take in. There's a lot of stuff. <clears throat> We're just again trying to put the parameters. Here's the kind of the maximum of what you can do. You need to come back and show you can fit in parking. You can do. Well, and that open space requirement doesn't include parking lots. I mean, so if you put a parking lot there, it's not called open space too, so you have to yeah. account for that. So all of a sudden you say you have 20%, but then you've got parking, you've got roads, you've got this. Yeah. It, it, in theory, isn't quite 20%. But it goes back to Ruth's comment earlier too. You don't want every morning, everybody living in that complex, you know, going up the hill and then in <laughs> cadence, you know, five miles an hour to get to the top to get to work. It's just not going to work. Well, that's actually something that would uh, speak to having more commercial than residential. Mm -hmm. Less peak travel. You know, yeah. You know, and leave it in the morning and come back at night. walk into work instead of driving. Well, that's exactly true, too. And, and, you know, to me, the whole idea behind mixed use is let's get creativity here and, you know, have people thinking outside the box with some sort of development versus okay this is the box that we all live in we're all used to from the 1950s until now let's modify it just a little bit and here and a little bit there and you know I I'm all for kind of turning it on its head to a degree I, I still remain concerned that the creativity by the developer is going to be counting 
non-residential uses in a way different than we think they're going to count them. Yeah. I mean, I don't think the rental office is a commercial use. I don't think the playground is a public space. I don't think the we, we had that sketch. Is, we we had that uh, for two fifty. Exactly what you're talking about. I came in as a mixed use, and right, it was exactly what you're saying. Uh, we have a definition for commercial on page eighty-eight, but I haven't didn't see a definition for office and professional. Uh, I mean, I I know what office and professional is, but <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's that's good to to detail it out, so we're all speaking the same language because. Everybody's got their own perception. And well, and sometimes ideas. it's easier <coughs> to put in some examples of what it's not than it is to try to describe what it is. Actually, we were pretty proud of the 250 committee because they made the same comments you did to the developer that was showing the plan, saying that's after what we know it about mixed use, mixed that wasn't a mixed use project. And, and they were very blunt about it. So, so it is there language project. that we can put in there to prevent that? Because the next developer might just come back and, you know, the next person comes back and does the same thing and all of a sudden. Once again, the, you know, if the guide had said this isn't what we want, or is there, you know, what what language could we put in there to say that you know the rental office does not count for apartments? And I don't know how to. There must be some way. I, I mean, well, it obviously you'd be the buffer sitting on the you know, well, sitting on the entities board, so. that service the, the homes right there are not to, you know only. Well, that's included. the trick. I think that it, that it has to imply that that not not just the residents there use those services that that, that, that the retail the public, and that the public and that public the, and the office and the professional services the general public services something other than so the people commercial that have uses address are there. entities that have to be available to be serviced by the general public but at the same time they could say hey anybody can come into this office and rent a unit <laughs> <laughs> or anybody can come in and use <laughs> the playground right <laughs> they'll have uh, bocce tournaments open to the public right right and that's not what we want I mean that, you know, but in a sense, how do you put it on paper to make sure that's not what you keep getting? Because that's just waste everyone time. Yeah, unless I mean, that's, that's what AJ wants to do for the next yeah. couple of years, is just review. <laughs> no, I mean that's that stuff. You know, we can feedback the consultant. I'm sure they've done how many different iterations. They've done it at different locations. We didn't think they needed to be here just for tonight, so Jim offered right. to come. We said, you know, this was more of kind of a, a wrap-up session, but you know. I think there's just some great questions. There's some items we can build into that, and I think you know, we'll have some great. But especially since the 250 group has already seen it, and so it's it's obviously. Yeah, I mean, we had a developer come in with a sample plan, and you know they had concerns about certain things, and said, "Well, no, this looks more like an apartment complex than it does a mixed-use development." We have concerns about this, so we kind of sat back as staff, let the committee. I mean, you guys have been involved in this and educated in this and gone through the process. They. They took off on their own. We sat back and they said, no, this isn't this, and this doesn't have walkability, and this doesn't have... Well, if we can fortify that, I think it'll be easier for the planning board members to See the explain intent. why you can or can't do certain things. Yep. Okay. That's great feedback. We think you would have made the same comments that the 250 committee made as well. I think you're educated <laughs> enough to talk this you see I mean, we just had a developer that wanted to come in. He wanted to share his plan, and the committee was open to it. So, I said, "Oh, if you want to share what you you had." Um, he was looking at an incentive zoning application prior to mixed use. He's been uh, waiting patiently, but he's been waiting, um, you know, for you know, this group to map, wrap up and with the 250 piece. So, we brought him in, and the committee listened, and I thought they did a great job. They had a lot of good feedback of how they didn't feel. Quite met mixed use and that's the intent of it. Well, the other thing, I mean, this seems to be much more of a cohesive one owner, maybe two or three type parcel, whereas the 250 is, you know, you're trying to, how do you manage that? How do you get it to be what you want? This at least, you know, one person could come in and say, this is our concept for the overall. Yeah. Uh, 250 is going to be a piecemeal process. 250 is going to be I mean, a piecemeal, a, and it's going to be very hard to make sure we get what from one people, from one project to the next. Right. Mark, on another thing, if you deal with a development and they have it around a centralized, whether it be park area or whatever, I believe you need to have it so that there is always access to any centralized area with at least like a 16 foot access to be able to bring equipment in so that 
you know, some of these pictures you see, it looks like, okay, we got a big square, we got an open area in the middle, but you got to bring equipment in there. How do you do it? Right. Helicopter? We, we agree with that. So, like, 16 foot, to me, would be like a bare minimum because of being at least far enough away from, you know, walls of existing structures, you aren't going to collapse them with large equipment. You know, that there has to be some access, you know. Make that part of the design. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and I don't know if 16 is enough. I mean, that's just a number of minimum, I would think, to Safe Good point. Any other comments to the document or comments to the map and the table? The map. Bill, I know you had some concerns about this. What's the consensus of the rest of the group? Keeping the picture in, taking the picture out, keep the picture in. I'm seeing I think you'll leave it in because it. one, you're going to go and you're going to have people bring Bill's point out and they're going to say good or bad and the town needs to hear it. Again, I don't think because we're all going to love every part of this document, but at least as you know, we can go forward and say it was a consensus, at least the majority was supportive of it. Okay, keep it in. Um, I know we covered this before, but so from this meeting, everybody seems to be supportive of, you know, we'll make these changes, we'll get this stuff back to the group, but generally supportive of sending it to the town board, basically saying that this group was happy with the document, with those changes send it to the town board for their consideration for review and, and send it to public hearing. I'm kind of hearing that first. And I know we've talked before about having the property rezoned at the same time. <coughs> if the town board decides to go ahead with it, have it rezoned at that time rather than individually people have to come back and, and apply to rezone as the group. And I think we've talked about that before. I think it makes sense to do it as a whole. If you're going to do it, do it all at once. Why, right. why, why make it more of a burden? Right. I agree. Just make sure that in the group and we'll email the, the whole group and you know, kind of make sure again that's the consensus of the parties that, that are getting, getting to the question of whether or not they adopt the ordinance and don't do the rezoning originally there was some thought that they would create mixed use as a district within the town and then individually oh, developers right. would come in and, and we're ask getting, we're for getting away from that right that's but yeah, since that's the group, you were pushing hard at the Absolutely. beginning. Not I just to want that. to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. 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 I, again, I'm just checking out my list just to make sure we go back to the board and say yes, we support the document. Yes, the group supports rezoning it once this you know is adopted in whatever form it rezoned it at once. All these parcels, and again, I think we'll add in those pieces we have. But the group is supportive of rezoning the block that's shown as it is there with bubbles change and everything else, but at least, you know, with that whole parcel map. Does it make sense, I, I go back to my zone D there, to list some kind of setback on there, a hard set minimum? I mean, that's why you have zoning for us to go back and try to... For zone D or for any... For zone D, more because, I mean, that's the creek, that's where most of your residential... But there's an EPOD, drainage way corridor EPOD. I mean, I guess, we're, I guess, so I guess we can reinforce the language. We have a 75-foot buffer on it. Change any pot or to go through those processes of trying to get those things. But I mean, if someone really wants to, but if you have a, you know, then it's there because one, I mean, I'm just thinking more of the public. You have a number of houses up there. You say, okay, zone D, it's this, but we're still allow, you know, shelters and other things that, you know, people might picture one thing. I'll see you say, hey, from the creek, it's going to be, you put it right in there. I mean, obviously it's already there, but if you just put it in numbers, someone says, okay, my property abuts this. Uh, last thing I want to see is, some big mixed use conglomerate and they don't under quite understand it, but also you say, hey, because you're here, the creek's here, this is really, nothing can go here. That, that's like that puts people's minds at ease. So you're talking just structures, because obviously just, pathways and walkways. Well, pathways walkways and things like that are fine. I think that, I mean, zone B doesn't really allow structures except for maybe storage. I think storage is all allowed, right? Maybe? Shelters? Whatever you want to define a shelter as. I've seen some big shelters, but... Uh, yeah. Okay. Just something so people have a idea that you know a structure wouldn't be right there along right the edge of the creek, creek on that area just so people are aware of it, even though it's very difficult to build right along the edge of the creek anyways mm -hmm. rest of the group will be supportive of adding in some at least for structures on zone d that would give you a setback or at least enhance the, the take buffers. care of that anyway why not just have all the verbiage yeah but none of, our, the e none of our e-pods prohibit right? development they within it. it. They just make it difficult. 
you, I mean, if you can go through and have justifications and you go through the factors and you can justify that it meets it, our EPODs don't prohibit it. I mean, we have woodland, we have all sorts of ones that, I mean, you can build on a steep slope. There's regulations you got to follow. There's a higher level of scrutiny. Right. This, if we said it was a 75-foot setback for any structure from edge of water, whether it be edge of creek or edge of lake, that get more of a hard number. Again, you can go to the zoning board. I mean, anything in our code is appealable. I mean, that's what we have the zoning board of appeals for, but at least it gives you a hard number where our EPODs are, I mean, we can reference the EPOD, but I think he's asking for a, more of a hard, fast number than the EPOD is a, stronger than a recommendation. I mean, the, the environmental sensitive areas, but we do have items within the EPODs. You have to meet those standards, and if you show you can meet those standards, then you know, you can build or do something within the I just think areas. it might be a way that helps, in a sense, you know, sell it to the public. You know, someone comes in and says, you know, my property abuts this. I'm a zone D. And also you go, people here mixed use, they picture big, whatever. Yeah. Also, you say, hey, you know, let's say, you know, the public hearing, the town board says, well, technically you've got, you know, 75 feet here, 75 feet here. This, you know, swath of land is only 200 feet. Well, it's not, you know, nothing can really go there. People go, oh, okay, so it's not, you know, I'm protected in that area. I think maybe it's more of a, of a selling point or a calming point that may help just to, I mean, a lot of people don't understand a lot of this. So also you say you put a hard, fast number and they go, okay, that makes, maybe it's easier that way. I don't know. I, I don't know if it puts any restrictions anywhere else because it can always be appealed. A setback. But, I mean, the, that's again the another level of... DC regulates that stream. Right. And you may want to have some simple structures on the lake shore. A fishing pier. Uh, right, well, but zone A and zone B allow for that. But they, they may want it in zone D. If they're walking around there, they may want to fish on the, that side of the lake. I mean, I guess we can designate what a structure is as far as a shelter. Well, I, mean, I agree, we don't want a, a pizza hut there. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> But, I mean, it's limited to what you can build. It says, you know, ex so examples are benches, signage, covered shelters, yeah, other amenities. Yeah. But I mean, that could be a dock or something. That's I'm not going to want that up next to the creek or to the lake. Well, I think something like a dock, people wouldn't be opposed to, though. But that's, I think, structure, I, I think, vertical structure. I guess we just need to define what structure is, because you could call us a dock a structure. It has a foundation. Yeah. Right. Has, because I think, I mean, even in the document, we recommended things like piers. So you don't want to turn around and say, no, I'm thinking more along the creek edge, because that's more well, what separates the creek. Maybe it's defined by not having plumbing and electric. Utilities? Oh, I mean, you're not going to sell ice cream without electric. <coughs> okay. I mean, those, those are all, you know, some details. We can come back with some recommended language to the group and yeah. see what you think. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? Yeah, we can kind of go through, okay, where do we go from today if we say yes? Well, obviously we have some changes to make, some, some updates to do. Um, Jim, Jim put together kind of a, a rough timeline. It seems more detailed with dates and times, but again, that was just trying to kind of show ballpark time frames of what else needs to happen after this point. So. We're kind of on step nine. Do you, so, you envision that Manitoba and 250 are going to go together? Or we the have the carrying? We have at this point. Um, you know, unless something changes, unless, you know, something with the buyer of this piece, whatever, we've, we've kind of kept them in line so far moving along. Mm -hmm. If something changes that, it changes that. But so far, we plan on kind of having a public hearing on the document as a whole and the, the rezoning. All is one. Jim, I don't know if you want to create this, if you want to run down through your. Well, unlike most governments, we are actually a week ahead of time instead of behind it. So but you made <laughs> the schedule. That's a positive. <laughs> <laughs> I made the schedule months ago. You can check we just did this 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 I didn't do this today. <laughs> I think there was a schedule presented in one of the first meetings we had. <laughs> oh, we're way behind on that. Yeah. This is a new schedule. Yeah, schedule's gone. This is a new improved schedule. So where we are today is we getting your comments back incorporating them into the final document, making sure you're comfortable with that. We'll get those back to you. Um, we, we Something we didn't talk to you tonight about, but we are in the process also of developing an ordinance based on your comments in the manual. 
The ordinance, uh, I would say right now, is maybe about 80% complete. Uh, we have to take your comments from tonight and incorporate those back into the ordinance to make sure it all meshes with the manual. We will share a copy of the ordinance you know, with the group. Yeah, but you'll get a of, copy of that. We've been developing it, but we want to make sure this document, everybody was happy with this document before we provided a final ordinance, because right. that obviously reflects what this is. But once so, we make these changes, we'll share that with the group as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. We want to burden you with that task. So we'll get that out to you. Um, once you're all happy with that, we will get everything now to the town board. Town board, we're going to give them about a month to review all the materials, uh, both individually and as a group. We'll try and pull them back together in a work session and uh, get, get some direction as to whether they want to move forward with the, you know, the, the public hearing. I know the town board's always sensitive to the idea of having public hearings on documents such as this that have such importance during the summer months, uh, particularly when people are going away on vacation and they don't have the ability to make comment to things. It's a little easier now that you have internet. Back in the day, it wasn't so easy, but I know they're still sensitive to it. Uh, the intent would be the other track is we've got an engineering firm, uh, MRB, that is working on our environmental issues for Seeker. They will be preparing a draft generic environmental impact statement to address concerns such as traffic, drainage, um, envir all environmental aspects of whatever we are proposing for this project. Um, that document will be completed and the board will also have to review that document. Um, they would then set a public hearing for public review of the document once they determine it to be complete. Um, that would also incorporate the uh, rezoning proposal, so they're rezoning the lands, they're addressing seeker at the same time. And then after they have their public hearing, they have to make a decision um, as to whether or not uh, they need a final impact statement. We'll probably have a final impact statement to address comments that come from the generic draft statement. After the board adopts the final statement is complete, we can finalize the seeker process, and then finally the town board would then pass resolutions adopting the manual, adopting the ordinance, and adopting the rezonings of the properties that we've all recommended to them. So this is the very best case scenario is some of the people in this room deal with seeker on a regular basis. They know it's not a quick process, and uh, this could get dragged out you know, well beyond 12 to of, uh, next year, of this year. But if we keep on track and we do what we need to do, we can get close. And this is assuming there, there are no glitches in the process, and we all know there's always a glitch somewhere along the way. So, But best case scenario, this, this is what we're shooting for. And if we can stay as close to it as possible, I think we'll be doing pretty good. I, I think that'd be a miracle. Just. I, I don't disagree with it, and I said yeah. that, I've told everybody that as we get as we get into the seeker process, it gets bogged down. It always does. Yeah. It's just a natural process for that to occur. But and doesn't the town board have to declare itself lead agent and then have 30 days? That's right. Of they delay? would do that after they've reviewed the documentation and determined that it's it's appropriate for public comment. They would then make themselves. I can't imagine another agency being involved in it because they're the only ones that are issuing. It's just there's 30 days where you can't do anything. Right, that's right. So there are there are processes that are built in the seeker that just kind of cause that process to slow down. But those obviously that's the benefit for the public to be able to make comment to it. So it is you know it's part of the process. It's an integral part of the process. Maybe the lead agency declaration should be sooner than later. Yeah. Well, it, it, it could actually be, it'll be before the DEIS is yeah. prepared, um, because without that, I mean, some the lead agency right. has to deal with the DEIS. So. I mean, if the town board is ready and willing to move ahead, I mean, as soon as it receives the documents, it could declare itself lead agency, at least to get that going and then and go mm -hmm. forth from there. I mean, at this point, the town board has been following the process. They've not wanted to influence the process, so they've, you know, kind of <coughs> stayed in arm's length. They've, aware of what's going on we've informed them what's going on but they wanted this committee to run its course to which you know you thought was best and to make recommendations so they're not unaware of it um, we've tried to build in time for them but they may say no we're aware of what's going on jump right into it say we'll declare lead agency on it and then at least get that park started but that's a conversation we can have with them once we end this off yeah it's a good point Bob I think that once the once the board is comfortable with a document and they feel comfortable enough to go out you know, for public review, they would then declare themselves lead agency. And I, and I don't think it's going to be a coordinated process with other agencies because they're the only ones that are really involved in the uh, adoption of the, uh, of the manual and the rezoning itself. So 
Um, we may, just because of the rezoning, we, you might have the potential for development. We may put in the county planning department. We might put in the water authority and the health department. But other than that, I don't think you, they're not issuing any permits in this process. So they may not be part of this process. But it is a good point. We need to start the process earlier than, than later because it'll bog down. So if somebody buys Manitou Lake tomorrow, do they have two options? One is to build it out into a single family home, say as it's owned now, or two, wait for this document to come through and... It's a really good question. And or three, try to negotiate something. In yeah, it's, it's, that's a really good uh, point of scenarios because right now I'm not sure the answer to it. I, I would think that if they came to the town board and said, look, I, we're aware of the fact that you're looking at this possibility here, we don't want it. We, we want to keep it for ourselves uh, and just have a single family home on the property or maybe a couple. Um, I, I'm not so certain the town board or, or any agency or group in the town would ever force something on somebody that they didn't want. Um, but that's everything to be seen because the other option too is there might be a, a public benefit to the community to have the document or have the uh, zoning in place for it. Um, the other part of it is maybe they're sitting out there just watching what's happening with us. They certainly have the documents, so they know that they know what track we're on. They might be fully supportive of it, but yet they just don't want to come forward until they have more information, or they're they're, they're finalizing their details with with uh, Old Castle. But it seems like they're pretty serious. But um, Dolomite has paid the money to have the yep. garage removed. Right, and and, and they're still doing work down there. Now the other part of that too is <laughs> suppose that the closing happened tomorrow. And next week, whoever that owner is comes in and says, you know what, your property is owned R120. That's what I bought it as. That's what I want it as. And I want to develop X number of houses. Right. We'd be hard pressed not to allow them to come in for site plan approval right. because, you know, it's zoned what it is and there's no moratorium on the property not to allow them to come in. They may have a use in mind that we haven't even considered. Yeah, that's another good point. It might be the uh, Olympic scuba diving center. It, it might be any one of a number. It, it might be but something we absolutely love or something we absolutely hate. You, right. you just don't know until you see it. But but we those would, are good scenarios to come up we with. We just noticed been for sale. We've tried to come up with a, a concept to kind of get out ahead of it, plan it, put it together. I mean, again, best laid plans. Somebody else comes and owns it. May have a different idea. Oh, why would the town board put a moratorium on it sooner than It's later? a good question. Uh, you know, and that's something we're going to have to talk to them if about. If they knew this was close, they could, in theory, say, hey, we're close, we have to work through the process yeah. now. Yeah, and uh, you're right. That, that might be something we're going to have to talk to them about fairly quickly here to see if they're willing to do that or if they don't have the energy to do it. I don't know. Um, I mean, we can ask the question, but obviously it's it's up to them. Yeah. But wouldn't it be feasible? I mean, doesn't it seem like maybe? single family residential would be, you know, I wonder if there's politics at work here, if they're racing the clock, if they want to get Dolomite to perform certain um, we heard that We heard that there were some things on the property that had to be removed from the site. There's some old piping. Yeah, that makes sense. There, there's a whole bunch of things that Dolomite has to do for them. With and, of course, Dolomite couldn't do it during the winter months. the winter, there's yeah. asphalt and concrete out there and other yeah. stuff that they want to clean up before they would control of the problem. Jack did share that portion of it with us, but he's yeah. been very tight about who they're dealing with. So, so we've, we've kind of just continued until yeah. we hear otherwise, you know, continue yeah. on the path we're going, and when and if we hear something, obviously we'll share with the group, you know, if there's a change, but we've kind of just been continuing on the path we're going until we know different. Sure. We will email you once we find out. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, yep. That's all we have for you guys tonight, unless you guys have other questions. Obviously, we'll seek out answers from the consultant on the other issues, come up with some other language. We'll continue to refine you know, those pieces of the document, share them with the group. Uh, obviously, we're working on the ordinance. As Jim said, I think it's 80%. You know, with tonight's stuff and with the, the 250 group, you know, we'll continue to refine that and get that out to the group as well. To We'll get some density ratios for you Feedback for Alice Creek and a couple of others just to see what it looks like in relationship to those. I think unless global changes need to happen or major things, I don't see this group coming back together or hosting a sit-down meeting. I think you know, more through email communication we can share with the group. 
if we feel it's important to get back together, you know, we can do that. There'll still be a public hearing. There'll still be secret parts of it. You know, opportunities. We'll, opportunities for other input and stuff like that. We actually would really like you to uh, to uh, come to the public hearings. I, I think it's good. You know, you are the authors of the document, and certainly it'd be good to have you there as we go through the process. I don't think we're expecting you to get up and have you to defend it or anything like that. But, you know, just to have you there is, is, is a good, uh, good show of support. I think. And the consultant's going to review it one more, one more time? We've been feeding yeah. stuff through yeah. them and, you know, they giving stuff back, so they'll... Before we send it out to the committee. And yeah, then we'll they'll look at it and changes to them as well. The consultant will be here for the public hearing. You know, they'll run through it and do their, their presentation as well as uh, staff. Okay. Thank okay. you, everybody, for coming really out tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.